Hello everyone, this is the introduction to the light refraction photos assignment. Suzanne Saroff is an example of a photographer who has taken this genre to a high level. She's done lots of experimenting. You can see from these photographs that the basic premise of light refraction photography is to fill clear glass containers with various levels of water and then place objects behind them and you will see some very interesting distortions. I encourage you to check out Suzanne Saroff's website to see more interesting examples of her artwork. The following slides are all things that I would like for you to try. Number one is colored paper. As you can see from these photos, you can use single objects or you can use groups of objects and I encourage you to try both. And do fill the objects with different levels of water and see what happens. Next, I'd like for you to try some patterned paper and you can see from these examples that that can turn out pretty interesting. I'd also like for you to try out some still life objects. So go ahead and use things from around the classroom or bring something from home. Maybe you have something interesting in your backpack. Next, place an object inside the water and you will get a different type of distortion as you can see with the straws that are placed in these glasses. I would like for you to try different camera angles. Take some of your photos straight on for one effect and you can see that um, according to the curve or the shape of the container, you will get different distortions. And I would like for you to try some camera angles from slightly above. And in certain cases, when you have the camera above, you can see uh, different parts of the patterns or colors reflected in the water. So definitely experiment with that. This one is optional. If you take a container outside and um, hold it just right and in just the right lighting, you can actually get photos that look like these. Here is the equipment setup. You need a white reflector to prevent glare from the ceiling lights. You can see that at the top of the photo. You need the PVC frame with big clamps and that is used to hold up the white reflector. You need two black mat boards to prevent glare and bounce the light. And you can see that there's one on each side of the white frame. And you need glass to make a reflection with black paper underneath. Next, you need uh, the giant sheet of cardboard in the background and clamps to hold the background paper. And you'll notice that the big red clamp in the middle also holds up the white reflector. You need the two LED lights pointed at the background. You need the glass object filled with water and it must be in front of the lights to prevent glare. And obviously you need a camera attached to a tripod. Clean objects means less editing. I highly recommend that you use the glass cleaner and some paper towels and you, you thoroughly clean any objects that you're going to use to get all of the fingerprints and dirt off of them. I also recommend that you clean the glass before you get started. Otherwise, you are going to spend forever in Photoshop cleaning off all of those imperfections. Camera settings. Here are some suggestions to begin with, but the camera settings, there's all sorts of different camera settings that you could use. So you could begin with aperture mode, which on Canon's is AV. You can use an 
f-stop of 11 for a medium depth of field, but feel free to experiment with uh, smaller or larger f-stops. Set the ISO at 100 for sharpness. We are not using the camera flash for this project, and my photos turned out, well, one stop underexposed. Here is the experiment checklist. So try each one of these. These are all of the uh, slides that we just looked at. Colored paper, pattern paper, still life object or objects, object placed in water, straight on camera angle, slightly above camera angle, and optional nat nature or outdoors. Here is your assignment. Take 10 to 20 photos. Make sure you try everything on the checklist at least once. Turn them into Google Classroom. Evaluate your photos carefully. Choose the one with the strongest composition that clearly meets the project criteria. Edit your best photo. Check the levels, exposure, and saturation, and adjust if needed. Consider making creative edits such as black and white, gradient maps, etc. And you will need to do some healing, cloning, or patching to get rid of any imperfections. Turn in your best photo to Google Classroom. That's it everyone, have fun with your project.